Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and in the last two videos I've been showing you how I made this bullfrog. It's a trophy head. Um, it's patterned after a giant African bullfrog, and the real ones, of course, are not anywhere near this big, but I thought it would be kind of fun to put him on a walnut plaque. I've ordered one. It isn't here yet. In the other two videos, I showed you how I made the paper craft pattern or how to put it together. And you can download the paper craft pattern that I created. Uh, it's on my blog, and I'll put a link to it right down below the in the description of the uh, video. And then, uh, after the paper craft pattern was put together, I showed you how uh, we can use the the pattern with paper mache to create a nice hard shell, how to put the eyeballs on there, how to give him a smile. And in this video, I'm <laughs> quit. <laughs> in this video, I'm going to show you how I put the color on. Um, this was actually kind of an experiment, so don't run out and buy the tissue paper. Um, you could actually paint this fellow a lot faster than using the tissue paper, but um, I really like the, the way the colors came out, and I'll show you. If we can get this focused here, you can see that the green, um, it, it's got a lot of intricate patterns in there that are not necessarily on purpose, but I really like them. Uh, down on the underneath on his chin, uh, we've got nice subtle spots there by putting the white tissue paper over it. Uh, the eyes, of course, are painted. So now I'll just go ahead and, and show you how I put that tissue paper on there and how I painted the eyes. I did a few tests first to see if I was going to like the tissue paper over the blue shop towels, which is what the frog was uh, made out of. That's what I used for the paper mache. I decided that it really needed to be white in order to get nice clear colors. To get him white, I first used some white acrylic gesso. I let the gesso dry overnight and then I used um, some clear gesso that I just happened to have on hand for I have no idea why. <laughs> just bought it a long time ago and I never used it. Um, and I used it as paste to put on one ply of Bounty paper towels. When I took the two plies apart, I found out that the back half of the paper towel doesn't have the um, kind of decorative pattern on it. It just has bumps and so that's what I used. So I let that dry overnight. The gesso does take a long time to dry, so you really do have to give it more time than I would have liked. Um, but as soon as that was dry, then I got out some uh, gloss medium gel, an acrylic product. I decided to try using it for paste rather than um, the usual flour and water paste, just because uh, with the acrylic uh, it's not really water that you're putting on there and so I thought maybe there would be less of a chance of the uh, the tissue paper tearing when it was applied. It actually did seem to work that way. You have to go really slowly doing a little bit at a time because the gel dries so quickly but uh, aside from that it works really nicely. As I was working, I completely covered the uh, pieces that I was putting on with more gel so that it would completely saturate the uh, the tissue paper. And as you can see here with the um, the chin, you can still see the pattern from the um, from the paper towel. Unfortunately, that's the only part <laughs> of the uh, frog that you can actually see those bumps. So I'm not really sure I needed to go to all the trouble of putting paper towel over the whole entire frog. There's quite a few layers everywhere else. The, the chin is the only part that has uh, just the one layer of white on it. I put the yellow tissue paper over everything other than the chin. Uh, and you'll see very little of that, but it um, kind of served as the under layer. I'm trying to layer this paper on there the same way that you would layer uh, acrylic paint if you were painting the frog. And then the green started going on. I found out that if you get a little bit of the acrylic gel on your finger then you can completely flatten out any little wrinkles that might show up in the paper when you're uh, applying it to the frog. I let the tissue paper dry overnight and then I started using some um, some metallic paints. I got a little set off of Amazon. I think you can get the same brand at almost any hobby store. Um, I just wanted to play around with all the different colors they had and it was just kind of fun thing to do. Frog's eyes have a rather interesting um, uh, pattern 
inside the uh, different colors in the eye and I wanted to see if I could reproduce that using that technique where you put wet Elmer's uh, glue, PVA glue down and then use paint right on top of it, acrylic paint and when it dries it will usually crackle in really interesting patterns. So I thought I'd try that. It wasn't as successful as I wanted it to be. After the first coat of uh, gold was dry, I did give it a coat of that gloss uh, gel. And then I got out my Elmer's glue and I put a really thin layer of the Elmer's glue over the eyeball and immediately um, picked up some of a different color of gold that happened to come with that little kit and brushed that on. It has to go over uh, the Elmer's when it's um, when it's still wet and and this part actually worked it, it came up with a really interesting pattern but because I kind of messed up uh, things after this <laughs> all of this pattern actually got covered up which is kind of uh, disappointing even though I was using two different colors of gold um, they were very close together in color so it's a little bit hard to see the pattern but I think you can see that uh, it did break up that uh, the color in a rather interesting way. Um, I'm really disappointed, like I said, that I didn't get to keep that. And then I did go ahead and put the gloss uh, medium over that and let that dry too. I did that between every single layer on the eye. While I waited for the gel on the eye to dry, I mixed up some golden acrylic glazing liquid with a little bit of burnt sienna and I used that to bring out that uh, seam between the two lips on, on the frog's mouth. I wiped almost all of it off with a damp paper towel because I wanted that to be a really subtle uh, feature. Something that you wouldn't really bring your eye to but uh, it still helps to define that mouth. And then when the uh, gel was dry on the eye I tried again to use the glue and acrylic paint crackle technique on the dark patterns on the eye. Um, this also worked sort of. Um, it, it worked for the for the large spots but I really messed up the the parts up ar around the edges of the eye and that's why I lost the the gold crackle at a later date. If I had stopped right at this point it would have been perfect. I didn't stop of course. I went ahead and uh, did it around the edges too. Big mistake. The eye got another coat of the gel medium and this time while that was still wet I put on some cut out tissue paper pupils. Um, I cut out six or seven of them in advance just on the possibility that I would get the first two or three in the wrong place which of course I did. Um, this works really well just because you can it's really hard when you're painting a pupil on an eye to get both of them the same size and in the same place. So I found out that if I just cut them out of uh, black tissue paper and stick them on there it, it's so much easier to get them to look the way you want to. When that gel was dry I went ahead and um, fixed the, the gold part of the eye with some more uh, nice bright gold paint that made it look so much better. And then I painted the light stripe around the pupil. I think that was some um, cadmium yellow, a little bit of white and a little bit of um, pearl uh, metallic paint. For the highlight in the eye, I used some blue glitter paint from the kit. I don't think I've ever used glitter paint for anything ever before, but it just seemed like kind of a fun thing to do for this guy. Um, I just put a little dab on there and then to put two little uh, actual white spots on each side of that. It turned out to look really nice actually. Um, I, I guess I was kind of surprised. <laughs> For the squiggles, which were the very last thing to do, um, I used some cadmium yellow, some titanium white, and some emerald green. And I mixed that with just a little bit of glazing liquid to make it slightly transparent. When everything was totally dry, I gave the bullfrog a very light coat of matte acrylic varnish. I kind of would have liked to try some... Um, some gloss acrylic varnish but I just didn't have any and as it turned out this was actually kind of nice because it makes a really strong contrast with the eyes. The eyes are really shiny because I used a clear fingernail polish on them. So that's it for today. I'll uh, let you see this fellow once the walnut plaque comes and I get him attached to it. Um, and be sure, by the way, to come and visit me over at ultimatepapermache.com because there have been some really good guest posts lately that are not on video, so you'd be really missing out on some fantastic tutorials if you haven't seen them. So come visit ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.